Welcome back guys, we are Nick and Sam. And this is episode two of our e-bike camping trip around the Northumberland 250. We are now on day three and what a ride the first few days have been. We've had rain. <coughs> Just We've had wind. And we have had 17 miles of disaster after disaster. Oh my god. Help him in. Help him. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I am I'm sleeping on the you. floor. <laughs> but above all, we have had an epic time. This is insane and we're off. Today we have made it to the east coast where we'll be cycling from Craster to Tweedmouth. Caller, can you ID yourself please? This is Flying Eagle, Sleeping Owl, can you hear me? I mean, is this you? I am not Sleeping Owl. You are. You are always sleeping. The thing is, I'm not always sleeping. It's not me. Okay, so trip update. We've actually already cycled 10 miles this morning because our campsite was not on the coast, so we thought we'd just cycle it and get here. Um, and our batteries, or mine, is on 98%, so a little confused as that's performing really, really good. Um, maybe it's that we're warming the batteries up, I'm not too sure, um, but let's click through. So 10 miles, trip time is 42 minutes. And now we're gonna make our way down the east coast. This place looks exactly like where a Viking would land, and to be honest, I can't blame him. Around here is absolutely stunning. One thing that I absolutely love about Northumberland is it feels like you're in a different country a lot of the time. Like all the houses, the brickwork, even the fauna looks different. It feels like you're on a Lord's estate all the time. And the biggest bonus is it's so quiet. Like, where the hell are all the people? It's as if we're going through ghost towns a lot of the time. Today is such a nice day. I'm so glad the sun is on our side. We can see Bambra Castle, aka Bebenburg, in the distance. For all of you Last Kingdom fans, you'll know what I'm on about. And oh my god, this is such an incredible coastline. It is so beautiful. Getting a little bit nervous now. We've called ahead at three different campsites and we've been not answering or there's no space. We wanted to get one booked in just because we want to spend a little bit more time here at Bamber Castle. The issue if we don't find a campsite in this location is that we aren't going to be able to spend time here at Bamborough and we'll have to cycle way past yeah, everywhere yeah. we want to see. And we've not had time to actually go and explore anywhere and we've, we've just been, on the been moon, blessed with we? the weather as well. So today is the perfect day to tour something like this and incredible I think castle. It's literally right there. Epic places as well. Yeah, we've got to see it, haven't we? That's another one with no space. Well, we're not having any luck, are we? It wouldn't be a Nick Rome vlog if uh, there wasn't any hardships or we couldn't do the things we wanted to. Yeah, so <laughs> we've got to the entrance of the castle and um, last um, admissions was four o'clock. It's quarter past four. We thought it closed at five. That's a shame. It's the only castle I wanted to see on this route. As in, I'm happy to see others, but this is the one. Do you only want to see if Uhtred was here? Yeah, I mean, he, he could be in one of the rooms nice. waiting. <laughs> Can you imagine hundreds of years ago seeing hundreds of Viking ships just beaching right below? This castle down here would be a terrifying sight. We need to at least find a campsite so we can get to Holy Island tomorrow. We've found so many places. No one is answering. It's getting a little bit late now. What we're going to do, we've got a plan. We are literally going to cycle to the campsite that we wanted to stay at because we want to stay at that one because it's at the beginning of the Holy Island causeway. But what if they don't have space? Then we will figure it out from there. <laughs> 20 minutes later, Sam 
doesn't think my plan was a good idea, so you basically go through the entire <laughs> campsites on Google Maps and ring them. We found one that is trying to charge £19 a night for a tent plus 750 electric hookup. I say trying to charge, like for us, that feels pretty, pretty pricey. And then she said, we have to get there by half five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a challenge in itself, on top of the challenge we're already doing. What do you think? I think it's pretty pricey. Like, we've been paying £20 every night, and I'm happy with that. Awesome. I'm available for that hour for you when you get here. <laughs> we did it. The campsite we wanted to stay at, they weren't picking up. Turns out it was their day off, so it's attached to a restaurant, so we decided to just ring them. Still sounds iffy with the electric, but... They're not sure, but either way, they said if there isn't electric on the tent camp here, they will make sure that we have electric, so that's fine. I'm happy with that. 18 Plan quid, win-win. I don't know what the mic will sound like right now, but I'm going to do a little trip update. We have now cycled 28.7 miles today, two hours and one minute, and we have used 43% of our battery. And Sam has just reported in, we have just done over 100 miles in total on this trip. How incredible is that? 150 more to go. We have made it to our final destination for the night and over there you can see Holy Island and Nico! <laughs> so Holy Island is just over there which is where we hope to go tomorrow when the tide is out. Good morning! I have to say I'm absolutely blown away by Northumberland. The landscapes, the history, everything here is just absolutely magnificent. And we're always on the lookout for land, so I think Northumberland is starting to get up in the height list of places I'd rather be in the UK. I think I could actually see myself living around here. It's just so quiet, so beautiful. In terms of the bike trip, it's been actually pretty straightforward there's only been a few niggly bits um, my kickstand that's been uh, quite annoying really just because I have to manage and watch where I put up the bike so that it doesn't actually fall over but nothing I can't sort on the way back and obviously groin that always kills but it's kind of expected when you're on a new seat and it's just part of getting used to it it's starting to get a lot better now so it's smooth sailings the only issue really is the nights they're getting really really cold but overall it has been absolutely epic and i just want to say if you haven't already seen northumberland definitely definitely do because i would love to just come back even in the van because there's so many places that we've ridden past and i'd be like we need to come back in the van to check this out and i nearly forgot to do a trip update last night so before i reset everything um this is what we did yesterday. Two hours 53. My fastest was 36.7, average speed of 14.6, and the trip distance was 42.3 miles. I think, I think that could be our biggest yet. And I nearly forgot to share how much um, percent we use. So we have actually charged it since, but I'm pretty sure we got here at about 34, 35%. So we used a total of 65, 66%. So right now we are packing all our stuff up again. Yep. We are going to be cycling over there to Holy Island, as Sam let you know yesterday. Um, we're hoping to get there just before oh, the yeah. tide is yeah, like yeah. fully out, so we can watch See it. The path emerge itself. At half ten, you're allowed to cross. It's quarter two, so we're getting packed up really quickly, and it should just be a five-minute cycle. Yeah, so we're going to hit the road I'm ASAP. Excited. on Holy Island and it is incredible. Considering it's an island, it feels really vast. Look, Sam, there's deer on the left. 
There's deer on the left. Do you see it? Our bike's here and we're just going to go on a little two tour. We've been told by quite a few people now that we can just leave our bikes as is, not locked up, and they won't get robbed. So that's what we're going to do. Just went into Lindis Farm mead shop, and as they say, when in Rome, let's try some of their mead. I've never actually tried mead before. I don't even know what mead is. You just got it on my head. Are you actually gonna down it now? I'm not gonna down it all. That's quite whiny, actually. <laughs> I'm just watching your face. Wow. Oh wow. You like actually... it. Mm, it's really nice. Do you want me to go get you another? Wow, that's really nice. Whatever we make, we can't clean up after ourselves, so it's got to be quick and simple. Have a look what we can rustle up. You know what? Let's show you inside our panniers. We haven't shown you that, have we? So this bit is where I keep all my food, so it's our fridge. Yeah. We've got wet wipes, we've got a bit it's of macaroni. It's fridge, isn't it? We've got, yeah. We've got baked beans. We've got everything going on in here. And I've got the same in mine as well. My top bit is also all food, which has basically the same stuff, doesn't it? Yeah. And then what have you got in each side? We won't so open it until all later. here is all electrical, so it's literally the plug for when we're on sites and our charge for the bikes. Over here is beauty and clothes. I've got um, all my camping stuff in one and clothes in another. We'll give you a more detailed tour of it later when we're at um, a campsite, yeah? And wow, how beautiful has Holy, Holy Island been? She, it has been awesome. My one amazing takeaway is mead. It is absolutely <laughs> tasty. Mine is probably the seals. Like yeah. go to the monastery, head towards the beach, sit on the benches there and just take it all in. There's loads of seals. There were loads of birds to watch. It was really beautiful. Yeah. We did want to see more of the island, but it turns out there isn't a like cycling route around yeah, there's, it. Yeah, there's no roads to go all the way around, but we'll come back another time and see it definitely because it is yeah. beautiful. And we, you know, we left our bikes earlier and nothing happened to them. We were happy, but we didn't want to leave them and then walk like miles yeah. away from it. So yeah, come back in the van another time. Definitely. Next stop, Tweedmouth. Today's dilemma is there's just so many flies out. They just keep ending up in my eye. Fortunately, I have a cat's eye, so I can just pull over and take them out pretty easily. I started to cycle like this, so they can't get in my eye or my mouth. Do you need a hand? And he's around. Are you okay? I want to go home. <laughs> I want to go home. In all seriousness, that actually did hurt. These bikes are heavy.
was fun. If you come and do the Northumberland 250 by bike, you've got to do this trail. It certainly put our bikes and our packing capabilities to the test. 14 and a half miles since we left Holy Island, and it's only four kilometers, four miles, sorry, until Scotland border. So we're going straight over then. Oh shit. Wow, well, we're on the road now, aren't we? We just did a whoopsie. We went across the bridge on the actual bridge, not on the cycle lane, yeah. We'll pull off. And um, so he was holding up all the traffic going across the bridge. We have now made it to Tweedmouth. Actually, no, we're in Berwick upon Tweed. Yeah, that's it. Because we've crossed the bridge, yeah. so we've gone a little bit further than the end point that we said. Um, it's a built up area. So we're gonna stock up on supplies, grab a bite to eat, maybe even a little celebratory drink. We have officially hit the halfway mark of the Northumberland 250. Yay! <laughs> just spent the past hour and a half in um, Tweedmouth and Berwick upon Tweed uh, socking up and now we're looking for a post office so I can return my sleeping mat because we've been carrying that around but we're not finding any post offices that will print the label for you which is what we need because obviously we don't have a printer um, we're also struggling to find a campsite once again but like yesterday I'm sure something will come up but whilst we're here and we pause I thought I'd give you a trip update so as you know we already did another five miles before I reset the trip so we've done 27 miles today 0.4 and we have cycled for an hour and 46 and we've used um, 40 six percent of the battery and it makes sense that we haven't cycled too much today because we spent a bit of time at holy island and now here in the town any luck yeah <laughs> finally got rid of that dead ass weight so now oh. i have half a pannier free yes what can yeah. we fill it with more food what do you snacks? call just one half of it a pannier is the whole thing a pannier whole thing's a pannier we have a plan it's 10 past six we're on the road again and we have found a campsite it is an hour's 10 um, ride away in the right direction however there is a point a stop that we want to go to in between so we don't want to miss that one so we're going to go there first and then head to the campsite so it's likely we'll be making base at about half seven 149.9 way we've done 150 miles Woo 150 miles to the 250 We ended up following the Google Maps to get to this Dudo Stone. It's taken us down this terrible route and it actually goes across farmer's land. And this is literally as close as that we can get. They are all the way over there. Nick has actually had to get her telephoto lens out on a camera just to see him. to it but it was still worth the visit 90%. really yeah i'm on 16. really that's the closest you've ever been to yeah, zero we need to get that on well it's a good job that we're here and we have to be here really because <laughs> we're so low on electric and there's just no campsites around so let's get booked yeah. in and get these on charge quick so here is our home for tonight this little patch, there's <laughs> one bike down again. There's a couple of motorhomes here already. And um, this is in Ettel and Ford, or at least just outside, which is our next stop after the Dudo Five Stones. So perfect location, but it is 25 pounds, which I think is a little bit pricey, but it is what it is. And we couldn't find another campsite at all in the area that had electric. What are you shouting about? <laughs> my bike just fell over. Not only is my cat sign there, bro. Oh, oh my god, it's actually full luck. My steering fully my come off. Rack has just gone super limp. Oh that god. connection's not in. Yeah, Drop it down. Drop it. It's not doing anything. Oh my god. You can't cycle with that. 
And look at look at that, it's come off. He's just got the bungee hanging off. Look at the horse. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how stressed you are? That was a scared one, that was. <laughs> a stress bomb. Oh, look, a hare in the distance. Running across the field. That'll put a smile on your face. <laughs> this doesn't look good. This looks like it holds on to this latch here. It actually looks like it's broken. It's not tightening at all. So I'm either going to have to ride with some floppy ass handlebars. We're going to have to duct tape it. <laughs> duct tape sorts everything. You want me to ride at like nearly 30, 40 miles an hour? You're not tape. 30, 40 miles per hour. You don't have to go that fast. And besides, when I cycle, I like hold onto the bars like really tight, hold them back like I'm on some sort of roller coaster ride. No. So you man. can just do that. There's only one solution. Cycle like you're scared. So rewind, guys. This little thing that sits inside this steering column here, I've just tightened the Allen key on it and it looks like it's not folding. Nothing. There's nothing broke. But it is holding on tight, so that's what matters. Oh my god, I am such a twat, man. I've been telling you that for years. I, you know what, last night I started chucking it down and I was like, is there something I've left outside the tent? Like, nah, there's no way I'd leave anything outside the tent. I'll bring it all in. Look at this view that I've woke up to today. What is that? <sighs> Ew, potato. My oh. shoe is sodden, and this is that the good one? That, that was the good <laughs> shoe. <laughs> Do you want to know something weird? Actually, I, didn't need I shoes. woke up in the middle of the night about two a.m. and I was like, "Oh God, I feel like my shoes outside." So I actually got the head touch on, had a look, and then I woke up again about four and I had that same. Weird this isn't thing. about you. <laughs> yeah. This what? Is about he was me telling me that your shoe was outside. <laughs> this is so about my bloody wet sodden shoe. This is soaking. I'm in the toilet trying to gather myself together on what I should do to sort that. Because I can't have two wet shoes for like four more days. It's just not very comfortable. Look at who brings one pair of shoes on a camping trip and leaves one of them outside their tent. Who does that? And look at this. My tarp's not over my bike. And this isn't waterproof. This is open. Fortunately, it's just food. It doesn't look like anything really got wet in there. What a disaster of a morning. At least Sam's is fine because you could have done with a bit of a break. This is giving me those thoughts again. Oh, sorry, I nearly got water in his porridge. How are you feeling though after your bike situation? To be honest, I think I'm on a little bit the same page where you might be at. Like, I was just thinking about it all last night and the bike situation has just completely changed everything. I think it makes it a little bit unsafe, so I don't, I don't know if continue. I think we have a lot to think about. <laughs>